Daniel Ricciardo made his return to Formula 1 last week at the Hungarian Grand Prix. That said, if you didn't know that by now, I'd be questioning if you were really a fan of Formula 1. Anyway, the Honey Badger's return got me thinking. What other famous comebacks have we seen in recent years? And then the more cynical side took over, and I started to wonder which was the worst. Hey there guys, I'm Will. Welcome to FP1, and allow me to introduce to you Luca Badoa, the man who made the worst comeback in Formula 1 history. So let's begin by setting the scene a little. We're at the halfway point of the 2009 Formula 1 season, a championship that thus far has been dominated by the unstoppable force of Braun GP. That being said, a few other teams were finally beginning to get their acts together. Red Bull were starting to be more consistent front runners, and unlike nowadays, everyone actually enjoyed that. Oh, and Ferrari were bouncing back after a tough start to the season. Not too dissimilar to now as well then. At the time, the Scuderia fielded lover of not giving a sh** to Kimi Raikkonen and Brazil's Felipe Massa. However, at qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix, that was all about to change. It was the end of Q2 when Felipe had just secured himself a place in the top 10, when he came across a spring that had fallen off the rear of fellow Brazilian Rubens Barrichello's brawn earlier in the session. As Massa passed the debris, the spring bounced up and collided with the Ferrari driver's helmet, knocking him out and sending him on a one-way trip towards the tyre barrier. The accident would see Felipe miss the remainder of the 2009 season, leaving Ferrari in a bit of a predicament. They now needed a driver at short notice to take the Brazilian's place until he was fit to return to the F1 grid, initially turning to a recently retired Michael Schumacher. The German had been acting as a special advisor to Ferrari after stepping away from the sport at the end of 2006, in a role that, by the sounds of things, helped Ferrari not do what they're famous for nowadays. So why didn't this happen then? Well, Schumacher got so close as to testing a 2007 car prior to his planned return at the European Grand Prix, but in the end was forced to pull out of the drive due to injuries sustained to the bike crash earlier in the year. Guess we now know where Lance Stroll gets his inspiration from. But with now even less time to find someone to fill their vacant seat, Ferrari turned to this guy, Luca Badoa, with everyone wondering the same thing. Why? Well, the 38-year-old was a Ferrari test driver and a record holder in F1. Maybe that's what Ferrari saw and just didn't look any further to realise the record was for most race starts without a point. Badoa raced sporadically in Formula 1 between 1993 and 1999, officially starting 48 Grand Prix and retiring from 25 of them. Granted, F1 cars were about as reliable as DTS fans' memories in those days, but it doesn't scream future Ferrari driver, does it? Badoa described his second chance at Formula 1 as his dream, though maybe he was still asleep come qualifying, ending Saturday at the European Grand Prix in last and three seconds off the pace. Given that by this point in the weekend he'd been caught speeding in the pit lane four times already, things weren't particularly looking good. That said, on Sunday, Badoa made a decent start, making up four places before turn two, and things were finally looking up until he came across the other debutant that weekend, Roman Grosjean, who was already embarking on his quest to crash into the entire field. That eventually included Badoa, whose race didn't get much better when his dementia kicked in at his first stop. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Good, no, 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 keep going, keep going. Push him, push him, push him. <laughs> Badoa would at least get some more pit lane experience as this move saw him cross the right line and earn himself a drive through penalty. Ex-Ferrari driver Rubens Barrichello came through to win that weekend, with Kimi Raikkonen taking home a podium in third. Luca, meanwhile, was last and the whole lap down. So things weren't looking great, but at least the Italian had the support of the rest of the grid. Some of my favourite quotes from drivers include Lewis Hamilton's He's not put it in the wall and Heike Kovalainen's I don't know what else you could have expected. Badoa topped off his weekend by crashing into Adrian Sutil's Force India in Parc Ferme, though despite all this, he was allowed to keep his seat heading into the next round of the season at Belgium. Would Badoa be able to turn his fortunes around here? Well, a spin at the end of Q1 probably didn't help, and the Italian would line up last once again. On the bright side, at least he was behind Grosjean when the Frenchman made his kamikaze move on lap one. That crash took out several of the big players, so maybe it was Badoa's time to shine. Well, to cut a long story short, it really wasn't. 
Badoa languished home last of the finishers once again, whilst teammate Kimi Raikkonen drove an excellent race to take what would be the Scuderia's only win that season. Ferrari at this point had had enough, and fellow Italian Giancarlo Fisichella's sensational pole position for Force India that weekend was enough to convince them that maybe a 38-year-old dinosaur wasn't the way to go on a driver front. Fizzy was promoted to the seat from the next race in Monza, though he too failed to score points in the alien Ferrari F60. As for Badoa, the Belgian Grand Prix would unsurprisingly be his last in Formula 1 and pave the way to him stepping away from his long-term test driver role at Ferrari come the end of 2009. All in all, Badoa never really got a fair crack at Formula 1. His 50 race starts were either for backmarker teams or those two misfortunate weekends with the Scuderia. Regardless, I'm struggling to think of a worse comeback in the history of the sport. If you think you can prove me wrong, let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video regardless, and if you did, it would really help me out if you dropped it a like and got subscribed for more in the future. I'm in Belgium this weekend for the race once again, so you can expect my review of that one to come out in the next couple of days. Before I go, I'd like to say a huge thanks to all my patrons and channel members, and if you'd like to support me further, all the information you need is down in the description below. But for now, that's all from me, so I'll see you very soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.